In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to conduct a bootstrap-based paired sample t-test in SPSS. And you would consider doing something like this if you are A, a big fan of bootstrapping no matter what, or B, the difference scores associated with the analysis were so non-normally distributed that you were concerned that the regular p-value, the asymptotic normal distribution theory p-value, wouldn't be accurate. So let's just calculate the difference scores just to check things out. They're actually not that bad at all, but let's just see what I'm talking about in terms of having excessive non-normality associated with the different scores. So GPA pre and GPA post, these are going to be different scores. And I can analyze the nature of these different scores in terms of normality through the explore utility. So statistics, I can look for outliers as well, and plots, get rid of the his stem and leaf. Not really a huge fan of it. So here we've got the skew and kurtosis. We can see that the data are really actually very close to normally distributed. It doesn't look like it visually, but in terms of the actual numbers, there is some pretty good evidence to suggest that these data are normally distributed because the different scores have skew much less than an absolute value of 2 and much less than a kurtosis absolute value of 9. So I probably wouldn't consider or at least not seriously consider doing a bootstrap analysis to test the hypothesis that GPA mean pre and post are different, but I'm just going to show you how you can do it if you were interested in doing it or you were concerned about the amount of non-normality skew kurtosis and different scores. So go into analyze, compare means, and paired samples t-test and put your variables in the uh, boxes as you would for just the regular paired sample t-test and click bootstrap and you can see that you've got an option to click perform bootstrap 1000 samples is what the default is you could change it to two my hunch is that your computer is fast enough to do that very quickly there's probably not much benefit to increasing the bootstrap replications beyond 2000 but you do want to click bias corrected accelerated confidence intervals click continue and click OK and so now the analysis will take a few seconds to conduct because it has to redo the analysis 2,000 times with different samples drawn from your own sample. And we can see that the key result that you want to look at is the last table where you can see that the paired sample t-test was associated with a mean difference of 0.65994. That's exactly the same that you're going to get from the regular paired t-test. So this is the regular asymptotic normal distribution theory p-value and these are the bootstrap results this will always be the same the point estimates are the same it's the standard error that starts to change and in this case because the data were so close to normally distributed or perfectly normally distributed the standard error is very similar between the regular asymptotic normal distribution theory approach and the bootstrap approach and as your data become progressively non-normally distributed and in this case the difference scores the standard error will start to differ from the standard error from the regular approach now in this case the results are all the same you get a p-value of 0 0.00 which should be 0 0.001 and this is also or less than 0 0.001 now you get a t-value in the asymptotic normal distribution theory approach and it doesn't give you don't get it with the bootstrap but you can actually get a quasi t-value by dividing the point estimate difference negative 0.65994 divided by the standard error which is 0 0.1585 0 0.15858 and I get negative 4.16 which is very similar to this t-value here but again will become progressively different as your data become more and more non-normally distributed the last thing I'll point out is that you have bias corrected accelerated confidence intervals. They're not actually based exactly on the same bootstrap procedure to calculate the standard error. It's a little bit of a different algorithm. So the results will not always converge with the p-value estimation, but they usually will. And we can see here that the lower bound for the average difference scores or the mean difference between time one and time two GPA pre and post, that difference between those means, if we were to redo this study many many times over and over again with a new sample equal to this sample size we would see differences between the means equal to with 95 percent confidence between 0.967 and negative 0.355 
And so these are the bias corrected confidence intervals that you can trust to be more accurate when the data are not normally distributed.